You're listening to the Laura the Library Lady podcast, presented by the Maslin Public Library. Hi, it's Laura the Library Lady coming to you from the basement studio of the Duncan House at the Maslin Public Library. And I have with me local author Lisa Belts. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much, Laura. Well, as a local author in our area, can you tell everybody a little bit about where you're from and your background history? Okay, well, I am Maslin born and raised. Awesome. Yeah, I lived here all but about 25 years of my life right smack dab in the middle of my life. (laughs) But Tigers fan, class of 83, go Tigers, (laughs) especially tomorrow. Um, I graduated from Malone at the time college, now Malone University University in Canton. And then I went to Michigan State University, got my PhD there in 1988. Um, I was working with live parasites parasites that can kill you so Ah. yeah a little bit iffy there and then i worked for a couple years at johns hopkins uh, out in baltimore on hiv hands-on research again you have to be a little bit careful i would say so moved to the university of pittsburgh for a while again hiv careful um then i moved out to iowa for about 13 years and they don't allow you to play with hiv in the university I was at for some strange reason. Hmm. So, so even though yeah. the professionalism and all of the precautions oh, were there, they... No, they didn't have the safety. Um, the HIV, you need a biosafety level three lab, and they only had biosafety level one lab. So no playing with HIV there. They wouldn't have liked that. I wouldn't have liked it either. No, and we're all learning something here today. If we are not uh, PhDs ourselves, we're <laughs> learning a little bit about that. I know you mentioned before we started, you used to work at the Maslin Public Library. Yes, I did. I worked at the West Side Branch. I did that while I was going through college at Malone. Very interesting. So uh, before your Malone graduation. So if uh, anybody remembers the West Side Branch, Lisa was there. Yeah, I was there on the weekends and some of the evenings. Cool. Well, go ahead. I interrupted you there. Oh, no, no, no In between your resume. Uh, I was out in Iowa. Like I said, no playing with HIV there. So instead, I did some work looking at uh, leukemia because I'm, I'm an infectious disease immunologist by training. So I was working with leukemic cells. And I was trying to see how green tea or other components of tea, and black tea if people don't like green tea, Uh uh, seeing how it affected the immune system. And they have a big environmental program there, so I was also looking at environmental toxins, particularly pesticides, to see how they affected the immune response. So that was my hands-on research there, and then I uh, did quite a bit of teaching there as well. And then I moved back to Maslin because I decided that I didn't want to retire about 700 miles away from my family. That would be nice to retire back around here. So came back home, did a little bit of teaching at the uh, Kent State System, uh, did a little teaching at Malone, and now um, pretty much full-time, well, I don't know if you want to call it full-time, but I'm pretty much writing, and I've really enjoyed that. So I know you've written several textbooks. Uh, How did you get started doing that? Well, let me just back up a little bit because I want to do a shout out to Mrs. Alice Vogt, who I think most people know Margie Vogt. Yes. (laughs) And they were related. So Mrs. Alice Vogt was the one who really got me interested in writing. And then another shout out to Miss Conklin, and Mr. Harding at uh, the high school, Washington High School, mm-hmm. because they also added fuel to the writing fire. Wow. Yeah. What do you know? Very interesting. Yeah. Do you remember Mrs. Conklin's first name? I know it's David no, Harding. I know him. You know, unfortunately, I don't. It's been years. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Miss Conklin, uh, unfortunately, is no longer with us. Sure. But, uh, but Mr. Harding is around. Mr. Harding so, uh, is around. We'll yeah. hope he's going to listen to that, and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll tell him about that, too. Okay. Awesome. We'll go right ahead and 
tell us a little bit more about um, the textbooks and things that you've written? Okay. Well, the one I kind of want to highlight, which is the only one that's actually readable by a, a lay public, is a textbook I wrote called Emerging Infectious Diseases, A Guide to Diseases, Causative Agents, and Surveillance. And that was written, oh, about 10 years ago or so. Uh, so some of the things are a little out of date. In other words, we don't have COVID-19 in there. Mm-hmm. But we have its um, its precursor, SARS, okay. which is another coronavirus. Um, actually, uh, the virus that causes COVID is called SARS-CoV-2. So I do okay. have the original in this. And this is readable. It's it's meant for uh, meant to be a textbook for college undergraduates, but I think more people from the general public have bought it than the people who were actually it was meant for. Hmm. So that's one of them. Then I, I'm just going to briefly mention the other books because uh, these are appropriate for people who are uh, either medical personnel. Mm-hmm or public health people, or maybe people who are in their graduate program studying these. So okay. otherwise, stay away from them, <laughs> which <laughs> you, I you shouldn't might not, say. You might not be interested in, no. in the following. No, it would be too technical. Are... It, would not, it would be totally boring to you. <laughs> so one of them, the, the most recent one that came out, uh, I think it was just earlier this year, is Pathogenic Coronaviruses of Humans and Animals. Oh, wow. So there's that one. And then if people remember Zika a couple uh-huh. of years ago, uh, the other one I wrote, and I think, I think that came out a year and a half ago, was Zika and other neglected and emerging flaviviruses, the continuing threat to human disease. And the other one, and this one, really do not read, unless you're a real <laughs> bat person. I shouldn't say that. It's got a bat don't. on the cover. It's got a bat on the cover. Halloween is Cute. coming. Yeah. Uh, it's called Bats and Human Health, Ebola, SARS, Rabies, and Beyond. Oh. And you might have noticed my bag. My bag here is from a bat meeting. And it looks like a pretty flower. It but does. Actually, it's a design. Yeah, it's but... a design. But if you look closely, uh-huh. those are bats because bats are thought to be good luck symbols in um, in China. And yet so, we are hearing about all these diseases that bats can carry. Well, they also eat a lot of agricultural pests. That's true. So, And they do a lot of fertilizing. So without bats, we'd be in a lot of trouble. So, so they guano are very helps. Important. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? Guano helps. And guano, I wasn't even thinking about guano, but yes, guano is... Well, you don't want me going on guano. Let's just leave guano alone if people don't know that it's bat poop. (laughs) I know it's bat poop. That's why I mentioned it. (laughs) Well, very interesting. Yeah, and I do like that bag from the Bat Conservation Society. But, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's neat. It does look like a flower. Um, But bats are interesting creatures. Oh, yes, they are. But don't read that book. Don't read the book. No, not unless you're really into bats. And, And maybe you would get scared. No. No? You wouldn't get scared? No. You would Not just learn, into bats. You, you would just learn way too much about bats than you wanted about to. About bat diseases. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to read us a little bit from um, maybe your emerging infectious diseases so we well, get a little tiny taste? I could do that, but or, I forgot to mention the last book that's coming out. And this, I want to put a plug in for this book. This book is... A group of us from the adult writers group here at the library. Awesome. Put a plug in there for the group. It's a great group. It's really gotten me reinvigorated about writing. And we're putting together a poetry anthology. It's called Writing Is. And if you want to have the authors uh, come buy it, um, come and autograph it, it's at the Writers' Fair, the Authors' Fair, here. On, here at the library on November, November 11th. 11th. Okay, yes. 11 to 2 o'clock. Okay. Pull Actually, I'm going to extend there. it from oh. 11 to 3, and I haven't asked any of the oh, authors great. yet. Rachel and I thought that um, that would be a thing. but So hopefully, folks uh, out there, it's going to be from 11 to 3, but none of the authors know that yet. So <laughs> it's well, going to be a bigger and better author fair than ever. I think it's going to be great. 
we have uh, about 27 authors coming. And so um, if you're listening to this in the future, this is, we're talking about November, 2023, um, here at the Maslin Public Library on November 11th, you can meet all these authors and like Lisa said, have them autograph their, their books and the poetry anthology. Right. Writing is. Well, if you don't mind, I can read a, one of my pieces of poetry that I have there because I also write poetry. Wonderful. And if there's time, I could read you a very short amount from my Emerging Infectious Disease book. Because I think it's just too enticing to talk about it and not read right. any of it. <laughs> Would you like me to read a little bit from the poetry anthology? Yes, that'd be wonderful. Great. Okay. This uh, is entitled Nearsighted, and it starts off with a quote, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I see in part then I shall understand fully, even as I've been fully understood. And that's from 1 Corinthians 13, 12. I am nearsighted, searching madly, groping for things unseen, dimly proceeding onward. I miss the mark. My perception is limited to that which is near and tangible and blind to the things in the distance. Since my perception of distant objects is fuzzy, I often deceive myself into thinking that they aren't there at all. Because of my short-sightedness, I doubt the word of those with superior sight. When they offer, offer me help, I refuse and continue to thrash blindly at the unseen world around me. What am I to do but wait for the day when a miracle of love will open my eyes and I will see clearly as I am clearly seen? Ooh, that's beautiful. Well, a lot of that grew at, well after my days at Malone, but was inspired by my days at Malone. Okay, I see. And I'm also nearsighted. <laughs> <laughs> and I was nearsighted. Yes, I happened to have had cataract surgery. So oh, that's so that do not look. That. That's why I don't wear glasses now. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, um, in your poetry, do you um, ever find yourself... You know, obviously with that one, doing a little bit of self-searching, soul-searching, um, do you put a lot of yourself into your poetry or uh, other people into your poetry? Well, the poetry that I have in the anthology, four of them are really looking into myself. Uh, they're mm -hmm. very introverted, as that one was. Uh -huh. Another one uh, that I like much better than this one, actually, is called My Father's Bookshelf. And it's about the death of my father and the books that are still on my family bookshelf ah. that were his. And it's a very eclectic uh, collection. And you'll find all kind of things there. My mother really does not like the books removed, but I've snuck a couple in over the years. <laughs> and so it's, it's uh, little quotes from some of these, um, like Kipling. Um, How did the leopard get its spots? Mm hmm And just little bits about that and about Hoyle and the card games. It, uh -huh. Like I said, it's very eclectic. So um, I like that poem yeah. even better, but it's longer, so I didn't want to read it. <laughs> it's a little too long, huh? Yes. Now, um, at the author fair, we are going to have folks uh, speak a little bit, so I hope that you're going to be one who will regale us for maybe 10, 15 minutes with some poetry or um, some talking about your writing and your process uh, and that kind of thing. So hopefully people will get to hear you live. I would love to do that because I have a couple new projects I'm working on and I kind of want to plug those and I'd like to plug sure. my Emerging Infectious Disease book. Yes, yes. So do you ever feel that you get writer's block? Um, for the poetry, yes. Mm -hmm. For the other uh, textbooks, no, it's more technical and you just slog through it. Right, okay. Yeah, I have times when I do more slogging, though, <laughs> and other times in which it just flows along. I suppose, um, you know, after many years of experience, such as you have, it does flow along quite well for you with the technical writing. It usually does, but the Bat Book, one of the chapters has over a thousand references, and ah. I read um, about half of each one of those journal articles. So that right. is slogging at that point. 
especially with that book. Some of the other books about COVID, it's not so much slogging because it's very interesting and pertinent to uh, daily Current. living. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's no slogging there. <laughs> so if folks want to uh, purchase your books or find out more about you, do you have a website or do you have a presence online? Unfortunately, I don't. Yeah. Uh, well, I shouldn't say I don't have a presence online. I have a very minor presence on Amazon. Okay, that so, counts. Yeah, and you can buy all of these books on Amazon, and they do have just a little bit about me there and how I really had uh, my interest in infectious disease started them alone. And okay. uh, it kind of goes from there. So if you're going to go on Amazon, you're going to look for Dr. Lisa A. Belts, B-E-L-T-Z. Correct. And you'll be able to find her there. So I want to thank you so much for coming and ask you if there's anything else you want to tell us before you read a little tiny bit of your infectious disease book. Well, I just wanted to very, uh, very briefly mention a couple of projects that I'm working on right now. Awesome. Um, and actually, you should only do one at a time, people. <laughs> 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 One of them is to write more poetry. Now, that is always a great thing to do. That's a good goal. Yes. The other one I'm really excited about because I think today, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to submit a proposal to a publishing company for a series of five small books that have about two to three chapters each. They're probably going to be like 200 pages, and they're about parasitic um, protozoans, which are one-celled animals, mm -hmm. parasitic worms, the microbiome of our cells and our DNA. We actually have little critters that came into there years ago. Oh. Um, threats to immunosuppressed people and the threat of bioweapons and gain-of-function research. Well, I think people so, would be really yeah. interested in those with all the immune diseases and things that we do have nowadays. Oh, I hope so. And this is meant for more an, an informed public, an okay. informed general public. So these are actually readable. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that I'm looking into, haven't really gotten a lot of, put a lot of time into, into searching out a source for this, but I have a series of very short, about 800 word descriptions of different microbes, the diseases they cause, how you get them, and how you stay safe from them. And I'm really hoping, you know, like I said, I haven't put a lot of time into, into searching this out, but I would like to be able to get these put as a series in either a magazine or a newspaper. So, ah. and I, I think I have something like eight or nine of those written up already. So that would be a great Kinda series. Looking, yeah, I'm looking at doing that maybe monthly or bi monthly. So, and those that's what I'm going to be doing the next little bit. Okay, those are those are really interesting goals. And I think, you know, people nowadays think we don't have parasites anymore, or, you know, we, we're clean, we are hygienic, um, but evidently we still do have all these types of issues that could happen to us, especially with immunology. Well, and, and the way people travel so much anymore, we're having a lot of parasites that left come back, and um, a lot of parasites that um, basically we didn't know much about because they weren't causing a problem, but nowadays we have so many elderly people, people who are on chemotherapy, people who are taking um, drugs for uh, autoimmune diseases, mm -hmm. cancer, chemotherapy, obesity, they're all are immunosuppressed. And some of these parasitic diseases are making a real comeback in this population. So it's coming back, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but fascinating, really. Awesome. Well, I think those are wonderful sounding goals and, and projects. And I'm so happy to have you here in our writers group. And, you know, really, uh, I think you're really inspiring because you've got this serious job, doctorate, um, you know, but very motivating to also write poetry and, you know, write these impressive textbooks and things that, that people can learn so much from. Well, the textbooks are the dinner the poetry is a dessert. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> awesome. All right, Lisa. Well, anything else you're going to tell us about today? 
Um, I don't believe so, unless you had any questions. I just want to read a little bit from that Emerging Infectious okay. Diseases book because, I mean, you know, you're claiming it's readable. Uh, right. <laughs> the general public's going to be... Uh, well, this is an interested public. Not everybody well, that's is true. interested in this. Yeah, if you're not interested in a nonfiction... No. <laughs> kind of biology, but... Yeah, okay. I want to I hear it. This is just a little bit from my chapter on monkeypox, which is one of the things that are coming back. Oh, yeah. It's like smallpox. Just to give a little bit of a preview here. Uh -huh. It is like smallpox. It has a fatality rate of about, that's a death rate, of about 30% at times. Mm. And it's coming back in this country. So... Uh, and the reason why we're seeing it now is because when we immunized against smallpox decades and decades ago, mm -hmm. it also protected people against monkeypox. But now we don't do the smallpox vaccine. Because we wiped it out. We wiped it out. Well, at or, least well, from naturally. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we don't do the, the smallpox vaccines. So monkeypox is rearing its ugly head and has been here in this country. So I'll just read a, a very short excerpt from this. Okay, monkeypox is a zoonotic infection, which means it is transmitted from animals to people. It occurs in several species of primates and African rodents. Its major reservoir is believed to be the rope squirrel, which is from Africa. The disease was first noted in humans in 1970 in part of Central Africa, particularly along the Congo River Basin, where it affected hundreds of people. It was later found to occur much less commonly in West Africa. In 2003, monkeypox entered the United States in a shipment containing infected West African rodents. The ill animals were housed in close proximity in the store to prairie dogs, which became infected prior to their distribution uh, in several states to pet stores in the Midwest. At least 37 people became infected in this country through contact with these animals, and another 32 suspected cases were reported. And I should note, most of the infected people were young children at day care centers because the day care centers had bought pet prairie dogs, and they uh. were infected, and nobody knew about monkeypox at the time. Right. So... The children got infected by either scratches or bites or cleaning the litter. And I'm not too worried about that in general from the African rodents. But if by some really bad set of circumstances, it would get out into the wild prairie dog population. Oh, I see. This could be a problem out west. So it's one of those potential problems. I had a little risk list I had written up about potential threats for the future, and that's one of them, simply because I'm afraid that, um, you know, importing some of these African rodents that are infected could get out into our population right. of rodents and could be a bit of a problem. Right. Well, not to end on a scary note, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate all your knowledge and you sharing all of this with us. Um, as I said, I think it's very motivating to have such a learned person who's um, writing and, and sharing her knowledge with us and, and her poetry as well. So I want to thank you, Lisa, for joining us, everybody, um, Lisa Belts, and she'll be here at the library in November. Thank you very much, Laura. Hey, everyone, this is Jeff, and I hope you enjoyed listening to the Laura the Library Lady podcast. Join us for the local author book fair on Saturday, November 11th, 2023, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This event is open to all and is held twice a year in both March and November. Browse, purchase books, meet, and network with local authors. Visit MasslinLibrary.org for more information. Hope to see you there.